Hey YouTube, I'll explain this later. I'm going to do the math up front. So you've got it all put together, got your pin out right, transistors in, you've got your meter hooked up, and you're reading in millivolts, the decimal points in the third position. So it's stabilized, the transistor's been in here for a few minutes, like three minutes. The number starts high and it works its way down, eventually stabilizing. So this one looks like it's hit rock bottom at 276.8 millivolts. So we're going to move that decimal point over so it reads point two seven six, and I'm going to jot that down. Okay, two seven six. It's important to save that number. Okay, the first thing we do with that number is we divide it by two point four seven two, and we're going to get point three eight one. Wowzers. That's not good. So we got that number. We got 276 and that, I'm just going to double check my math, 0.276 divided by 2.472 equals, okay, it's a little bit different. We got, I must have done something wrong. It's 0.111 and that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, now we hit the switch, and what do we get? We get 961, 0.961. So we are going to hit clear, 0.961. We're going to subtract our first reading, which was 0.276. And then we are going to multiply that times 100, and we get 68.5. So 68. Point five is our HFE and point one 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 is our leakage. Now for the leakage, these, these transistors they actually leak voltage. And anything I don't want to say anything, but I want to say when they're leaking at a rate of three hundred, that's not gonna work. It's gonna be unacceptable. So we're gonna want something 150 or less for optimal. This is 100, so I mean it is what it is. You're going to want to go through all your germanium transistors and find the ones with the least amount of leakage or hear what they sound like. But if you're doing it blindly with no numbers for reference, that's not good. So uh, I'll repeat the process. I'm going to just go ahead and rip this one out and what I'm going to do is write those numbers down. So we've got 68 HFE, and it was 111 leakage. And then I'm going to just cut a little, this is like a Christmas card, a little tag that you put on the Christmas present. And I'm going to fashion that kind of around there with a little bit of masking tape. This probably isn't the most efficient. This is like a really messy way of doing this, but... I don't have uh, like 50 of them right now. I'm going to be getting 50 of them. That's why I've got this out and that's why I'm brushing up on my germanium testing skills. So I'm going to pop a transistor in and then we'll talk some more. It's, it's a three socket connector that I'm putting this into. And there it goes. So we'll put this on. We see it's reading 1.37 right now. You see, can you guys see that 1.37? So we'll see what it is when we stop. Oh, sorry, I had to switch up. It's at 0 0.63. 6.3, it was 6.30, we'll say. And we'll see how low that gets. It's probably going to get down in that 0.280 region. So it's because this is going to take a while. So uh, basically, for those of you who don't know, the old timey fuzz pedals, the first distortion boxes that guitar players use, like Jimi Hendrix, they had a special old timey type of transistor used in them called a germanium transistor. And that's the element, uh, they're, they're, they're not from Germany, they're not made out of geranium flowers. It's an element that they used before they were hip to silicon. And ger ger germanium, <laughs> and Rob Fetter syndrome. He calls them geraniums. 
germanium transistors, they leak a little bit of electricity. They also have this special spongy sound as this thing that only certain people can really hear and uh, the people kind of uh, obsess about this. So when, you, when you're going to build one of these, you can't just get any old germanium transistor and throw it in there because even if it's the right part number, you need the proper amount of gain and leakage. So that's what this test rig is built for. Mine has a uh, completely unnecessary uh, stuff on it. First off, this is the adjuster. It's, they said on the schematic you can either use a fixed resistor or an adjuster. I put the adjuster in, which I would not recommend. I would recommend you find a resistor that's exactly 2.472 and install that rather than messing around with this. I thought, oh, I'll put the adjuster in. Well, yeah, I'm constantly adjusting it. And I can show you more of that later. I will. Because if you disconnect this red one here and put it on put it on the black and the white with your test uh, thing and set it to ohms, that'll tell you what this is ohming out at. And then you can adjust that with a little screwdriver. And you'll see how it drifts and how really hard it is to get in on that last digit. It's almost impossible. So the other thing that makes it look cool is this uh, 9.8 volt readout here. Uh, basically, I wanted a stable power source, so I use this 12 volter coming in, and I use a 7809 voltage regulator. That's what that part is there. And all that does is it takes 12 volts coming in and converts, knocks it down to 9. So there's a couple... Uh, kick smoothing capacitors to make it nice and smooth decoupling capacitors to get rid of uh, any kind of gremlins in there and then the what comes out is just pure 9.08 volts so you build this thing with a diagram uh, from tag board effects the wonderful folks Mirosol and and Josh uh, Klingerhofer and all the wonderful folks at tag board effects they have a layout for this. Uh, the original guy was a guy named uh, Reginald Gerald Keenster. R.G. Keen came up with this. Uh, well, he didn't come up with it, but he made the document on the internet that's so famous. Uh, debugging the fuzz face for maximum germanium transistor effect. You have to look that up. You can find the original article that tells you all the math and all the fun stuff behind this circuit. Me, I'm going to trust that you're smart enough to be able to find the uh, the tag board effects layout page and build it from there and then just kind of figure it out maybe from watching me or reading to tell you the truth if you could show me now L reading looking at the vero layout provided by tag board effects and reading their text is really what you want to do because anything else is more information that just gets confusing what it is is you measure the transistor you divide that by 2.472. Then you toggle the switch, you subtract the number that you get from your first number before you divided it by 2472. You take that first reading, you save that. Usually your second reading will be bigger, so you take that bigger reading, subtract the small re original reading from it, you take that number and multiply that times 100, that will give you your gain. The leakage number, you, that's the first equation, which is the first reading divided by 2472. Two. So you put it in, you pop the transistor in, you wait until the number stops, you write that number down, then you type it into your calculator, make sure that it's got a point in front of it, point, you know, 332 or whatever, 189, whatever number you get, and then you uh, divide that by 2.472 and then write that number down. That's your leakage. Okay. And you've got to make sure that you had written your original number off the uh, multimeter screen. Let's say it was 3, 2, 0 0.329 or 0.180, whatever you wrote down. Then you, 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 you flick the toggle and you don't you, know, you You can just hit the switch. You don't have to flick the toggle. You hit the switch, whatever number you got there, let's say it's 0 0.989. Well, then you type that in and you subtract your first reading, which was 380 or 
you know, 0 0.380 or 0 0.181. And the, the, usually they'll be, all be the same form and it'll be 0 0.3 digits. So you subtract that, you know, you hit the switch, subtract your first reading, and then multiply that times 100 and that'll give you your gain. It sounds way much more complicated than it is. I wrote on here CBE, and that's to tell you uh, collector base emitter, which leg of the transistor goes into which of the sockets. And then I wrote um, V divided by 2.472 equals L. And that here is uh, NC is V. Your first switch setting is up, so that's V. So my V number, you divide that by 2.472 to get L, or leakage, and that's in milliamps. So here, are we stable yet? I know I'm still talking, and it's still going down. We'll say, uh, we'll estimate this, because it's still going down. We'll say that it's going to hit 320 and stabilize. So, I mean, this is a preliminary one. It's not going to be exact, but I'll hit point. 320 divided by 2.472 equals 1.129. And I had 320. Now, see, it's going back up. So 324. You know, we'll say it's we'll say it's 324. So let me write that down. 324. Because a lot of times, what you'll see is it'll it'll go down. It'll hit. A certain plateau and then it'll go up a little bit and then come down it'll kind of oscillate in there so I'm gonna call this at 3.22 is what I'm gonna call it at seems to be in the middle that's the first number that I'm writing down so we go 0.322 divided by 2.472 oh that was a mistake there point three Two two divided by two. Oh my goodness! Point three two two divided by two point four seven two equals. Man, I am just fudge fingers today. So it's point three two two divided by two point four seven two equals one thirty. Okay, so we got one thirty. That's my amount of leakage on this in milliamps. So now we hit our switch, ding, 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 should get about double of that. It's 0.946. So I'm going to go in and clear it, 0.946 minus the original digit was three, 0.322. So 0.322 equals 0.624 times 100 and we get 62.4. So we got 62.4 HFE and 130, 62 HFE, 130 leakage. And that is how you test germanium transistors for leakage and gain. So basically, to review, you can take a look over at RG Keen. You can type in Geofex, that's the name of his site. Geofex, and then type in testing germanium transistors. And you'll see the original documents for this. And then you can go over to Tag Board Effects. If you type in uh, germanium tester, germanium transistor tester, and then look at Google Image Search. Or just look for the one that comes up under tag board effects. You'll see where these guys have uh, this wonderful image for the Vero layout that I built here. Um, you don't necessarily need a regulated power supply. You can use a battery. I. You know, the thing about using a battery is it's going to drain. You're not going to get a consistent result. I really like the idea. I mean, you could you could just put a jack on this and just run one of your 9-volt power supplies that you use for your effects, as long as you knew it was right at 9 volts. See, that's the thing. The circuit calls for exactly 9 volts, and that's why I wanted to use 
the 9 volt regulator. But I'm familiar with those. I build those little circuits all the time with the two capacitors on there. I mean, basically, it's a, like a 104 cap on the input and then like a 10 UF or a 100 UF electro on the output. So you combine the ground on the middle pin and then the input is on the left, pin 1, and pin 3 is the output. So your hot side of your electro cap goes on pin 3 for the output. And the input is the 104, the uh, like a greeny, a small cap, you know. And what that does is it filters any kind of high frequency interference with the small cap and the lower, the bigger cap uh, grabs the lower oscillations, whatever it's blocking any kind of garbage that could pass through. So that's extra filtering. You don't necessarily really need that. You know, you could build it without it, but I've always seen it done with those capacitors. And like me using this voltage readout thing and an LED is ridiculous. You don't need any of that. You're going to get a reading. You're going to know if the power is disconnected because you're not going to get a reading on the thing. I just built that because I had that stuff laying around and because I was being a weenie. But technically, uh, you could build this just and set it up. You don't need to build it on a board. This is... This was for testing a whole bunch of transistors. If you're going to be doing 50 or 100, you might want to mount it on a little piece of scrap wood like I did. You know, the only, only other thing that I would recommend is, um, like I said in the beginning, I, I use this trimmer pot. I would rather have a fixed resistor. And to, to come to think of it now, I would, uh, if I was going to rebuild this, I would double space the the sockets I would leave a blank and what I would do is um, just fill that in with some sharpie marker the ones that were dead or something to let me know that that's a dummy socket because getting them all in right next to each other is just kind of fiddly for me uh, in my case I mounted this block uh, this trimmer that has a lot of turns on it and it kind of gets in the way of inserting the one leg you could also go with you know, if you want to have flying leads coming out and have alligator clips, I wouldn't recommend that. And also, if you like, if you're not afraid to spend money, you can just spend like 15, 20 bucks and they sell a little tester unit. Uh, I'm not sure how those work because I built this myself and I learned how to use it and I would much rather save that $15. So of course, if you're if you're into being wasteful and spending money, that would be a wonderful way for you to flex your muscle, and you could show off me. I'd much rather have this Gilligan's Island coconut style contraption, coconut radio type thing that I use, because that's that's what gets me off. But so if you're one of those guys with credit card debt and you buy the gold plated transistor tester, you're in the wrong place. I don't even know why you're here. Uh, but basically, I made this video not so much to brag about all my skill and knowledge. It was just to pay back the community and try to make a quick video explaining the mathematical process, which is dividing one number and then subtracting a number and multiplying times 100. So it's really basic stuff. Special thanks to RG Keen and Mirasol over at Tag Board Effects. Can't forget those wonderful folks over at Tag Board Effects. And of course, and as always, Pink Jimmy Photon, my brother from another mother. Love you guys and peace.